In the following video, I melt some aluminum. I melt aluminum cans and I turn them into these little ingots that I got right here. Um, I got a bunch of them. And what I've done is, and this isn't my own design, this is a foundry that uh, I found plans online on how to make and it's using a homemade refractory. Now I'm familiar building forges with proper refractory but this is a DIY type of refractory um, that I have used in a coffee can forge uh, on my channel here if you're interested in seeing that. However it's not really the best refractory but I'm just going to give you my impressions of it and just show you what I've done. Um, so what this is is just a galvanized bucket. Um, you shouldn't use galvanization on anything that's going to get uh, direct heat because it, uh, it'll, the zinc will burn off and it's not good for you. Um, and inside I've poured some refractory which is made out of plaster of Paris sand mixture and then poured in here and then a, um, I guess a chamber was made. And then that's where the crucible sits. And then this lid, which was made out of also the same stuff with two U-bolts so that you could remove it with tongs um, once it gets, uh, gets up to temperature. The only problem with this stuff is it has a tendency to crack. So that's why I have this, this clamp on it right here. So this restricts down the top of the hole and you can remove this like that. So, I have a crucible as well, right here, which is made out of just the melt leftover aluminum, which you'll see in a bit how I melted it. This is a quarter inch schedule 40 pipe. I shouldn't say it's quarter inch, but it's schedule 40, so whatever the ratio is for that diameter for schedule 40, with I believe this is a three and a half or four inch pipe, something like that. Anyways, I welded on two nuts on the top here and one on the bottom here so that I could clamp on to this. You'll see in the video if you watch it later um, how this works so I can then pour it like that without burning myself. So I can extract it from the chamber so I can grab hold of it, extract it out, and then pour. So. That's the crucible. And I welded on a plate on the bottom, which I forgot to mention. This is super durable. This will take forever to burn out. And I just got this at the metal supply shop. This piece of pipe was like, I don't know, maybe three bucks. This is powered by a propane torch, which I've done in another video. And I have a few different types of torches, but this is the one that I just happened to use this time. Uh, I have a, a Ron Real uh, Bell, um, bell type of uh, burner in my other forge so that just fits in like that and then you light it and it heats up the inside and you can start melting it's as simple as that so what I wanted to talk to mention before I show you the rest of uh, the video of how I melted down some of these uh, aluminum ingots which is which I what I have right here so these are a bunch of aluminum that I poured out in a pie, I shouldn't say pie, but a little muffin tray that I got at the dollar store. Just kind of neat. Uh, my original idea was to cast aluminum hand, but uh, I haven't gotten around to it. I have a mold of my hand that I made and I was going to try to cast it out of aluminum. So my impressions of this DIY forge is more of what uh, I wanted to talk about. I've used this about three times and already it's starting to crack from the heat and just from use. I don't think this refractory is a very good material, being plaster of Paris sand. It works, um, but it took forever for this forge to, I should say, sorry, this foundry to heat up. It took well over, wow, to get up to melting temperature. I'd say well over 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. Uh, before the crucible got hot enough so that I could put aluminum cans in there and it would start melting. Once it got up to temperature, it was easy to keep temperature, but uh, it this refractory material is not very efficient, I have to say. Not compared to, say, my forge down here, 
which is made out of uh, K wool, uh, mineral wool. Um, you can see kind of the door on that right there. But uh, that forge gets up to temperature in like, oh geez, I, I would say almost in seconds, but it's made out of the proper wool, ceramic wool, and it uses a proper um, pottery uh, refractory for a foundry or uh, a forge. So if you're gonna do any amount of aluminum casting or brass casting, I highly recommend you go that route I'm going to probably redo this because I have a bunch of leftover wool from my forge build and if you haven't seen that, check that out on my channel as well. And that will make this super efficient. This isn't very efficient, but if you don't have access to it or you just want to play around, this will work for you, but don't expect this to last in my very humble opinion. Um, so I thought it was cool to try. So check out the rest of this video of me just uh, melting some aluminum cans with it and the operation of it. But uh, I'm going to redo this in the next few weeks, maybe a few months. I might not get to it right away because it's starting to get cold here. Um, I'm going to use mineral wool or K wool, line it, make a proper lid out, lid for out of uh, a ceramic board, and then see how efficient this is uh, with that setup and then coat it with a proper uh, stabilizing refractory over the wool and I suspect I should get some really really good results with it if it's anything like my forge that can uh, that can easily get up to a super hot temperature um, unlike this which just just isn't as efficient it does work um, it just took way more fuel and I think if you're doing any amount the savings in, in, in fuel alone will will uh, pay for the refractory itself even though the refractory costs a bit more and you have to order it online if you can't get it locally at your pottery supply. Alright, on to uh, melting the aluminum, aluminum cans.